हेलो डियर फ्रेंड्स वेलकम अगेन टू माय चैनल जियो टेक्निकल इंजीनियरिंग कंसल्टेंसी टिप्स माय टुडे सब्जेक्ट टॉपिक इज बियरिंग कैप्सी एंड इट्स रिलेटेड टर्म्स व्हिच इज वेरी मच नेसेसरी फॉर ऑल टू बी वेल वर्स्ड विद ऑफ हाउ टू डिसाइड द बियरिंग कैप्सी ऑफ एनी फाउंडेशन एंड व्हाट आर इट्स related terms this is actually the 17th lecture in my series which has been numbered as lecture 14 however in this lecture of mine which is 17th in number you all see this foundation this is a typical representation of any footing here this has been uh, depicted as isolated column footing rcc reinforced cement concrete isolated column footing this is the soil whenever you construct this footing you have to afterwards uh, completion of this footing backfill the soil so what i wish to make you understand is for any footing or dimension at any particular depth of foundation below the general ground level what is the total pressure at the base of the footing qg this has been represented as qg and this includes the weight of the superstructure which comes to the walls and the columns and the slabs etc which are being uh, borne by these footings foundations which ultimately disperses this load transmits this load to the soil beneath these foundations so total pressure comprises of the weight of the superstructure plus the weight of the footing and the backfilled soil which is termed as gross pressure or gross loading intensity now what is the net pressure at net loading intensity this is qu represented by qu is qg minus gamma df gamma df is actually the effective surcharge that is the gamma df effective why it is being termed as effective ki if you encounter any water table in between this say for example you are encountering any water table here out then the need for calculating the effective surcharge where in this case this will be gamma df and this will be gamma minus 1 df okay now as you see when slowly and steadily building is being constructed your load on the foundation increases so what i wish to explain you is as the load increases it leads to a stage where your foundation can fail from shear failure at the base of the footing but we have to recommend those foundation sizes with those very bearing capsules where your foundation doesn't fail either in shear or in settlement that is they should abide by the shear failure conditions as well as the permissible settlement conditions as per the respective indian standard codes now what is the maximum gross intensity of loading before the shear failure occurs this is defined as the ultimate bearing capacity means when the foundation is safe from the shear failure and it in turn actually depends on the type and the property of the existing soil beneath the founding level as well the size shape and the depth of foundation with the mode of loading mode of loading means ki whether the loading is perpendicular to the foundation or is at eccentric or it is eccentric loading now what is net ultimate bearing capacity net ultimate bearing capacity is this qu which is the ultimate bearing capacity minus gamma df what is net safe bearing capacity net safe bearing capacity is worked out by applying a certain factor of safety on the net ultimate bearing capacity this factor of safety generally is being referred to vary from 
2.524 in different textbooks but as per national building code it is being referred to as to be generally taken as 2.5 but actually it depends upon the site conditions the time rather the time of the year when you have done the soil investigation the existing ground water table the type of soil and so many other things which hopefully i would be discussing in some of my upcoming future lectures where i will be discussing about the modes of failure of foundations which are generally general shear failure local shear failure or punching shear failure <coughs> okay now what is gross shear bearing capacity gross shear bearing capacity is this qns that is the net shear bearing capacity plus gamma d this generally is being taken say if you are going to construct any basement any basement then in this very particular case whatever the net shear bearing capacity for the safe allowable pressure you get at this very level you can add rather you should add this gamma d f factor which will ultimately give you the term as safe bearing capacity on which the for the the structure would be designed rather to say this value will be taken up by the structure engineer concern now while designing any foundation what needed to be seen is that settlement should be within the safe permissible limit now what actually is the thing is ki we do calculate bearing capacity calculations as per is 6403 1981 reaffirmed in further years the latest one we have to follow up the settlement are calculated by is as per is 8009 part 1 for shallow foundations and part 2 for deep foundations respective years reaffirmed concern and the safe permissible limits are usually taken as per is 1904 1986 in which very particular case the settlement limits for different kind of foundations for different kind of structures for different soil conditions are being mentioned in a table from where we have to take this permissible settlement limits for the particular foundation type and accordingly decide the final bearing capacity so what actually is to be done is first of all the bearing capacity need be calculated as per shear criteria as per shear criteria and for the as per settlement criteria so what actually is the net soil pressure or net intensity of loading this can be defined as safe allowable pressure or safe bearing pressure in which particular case the suggested foundation is safe from shear criteria that is it will not fail in shear as well as it is producing settlements which are within the desirable limits as specified by is 1904 or any other reference code for different kind of structures so what is finally termed as the allowable bearing pressure or allowable bearing capacity which are usually being recommended in the geotech investigation reports is the lower of the net safe bearing capacity and the safe bearing pressure in some cases what we find is ki the settlement produced for net safe bearing capacity is within limit then when we recommend that bearing capacity it is usually termed as the net safe bearing capacity in some cases what we find is ki the settlement produced for net safe bearing capacity is above the safe permissible limit and we have to reduce that 
net safe bearing capacity in order to bring that settlement within the permissible limit and in that very case our foundation recommendations are governed by the settlement criteria in which very case the bearing capacity recommended is referred to as allowable bearing pressure or allowable bearing capacity or safe allowable pressure what need to be seen is footing takes the load of the superstructure etc transmits the load through the soil beneath the founding level which is actually termed as this this as foundation so this is all which i wish to explain you in my current lecture of bearing capacity of foundations oh dear friends you would have enjoyed this lecture of mine and your clarity would have become more clear about this subject topic hope you will keep on subscribing to my channel and watching my videos thank you thank you very much